This is Armadillo officinalis Orange Crush. I'm Russ of Aquarimax Pets, and I've asked Ashley Niebel to tell us all about these unique isopods. So, Ashley, can you give us an introduction to this morph of Armadillo officinalis? Hello, my name is Ashley Niebel, and Russ has kindly asked me to speak about this particular species. This species is Armadillo officinalis, and I will be talking exclusively about this coloration, which is Orange Crush. This coloration is such a beautiful color that the film quality may not seem great, but it is the only way to highlight the actual richness of the reddish orange that they have. The adults are a brick red which are the larger ones, you'll see this one right there. The juveniles or subadults tend to be this kind of a medium red. Younger, the younger they get, the lighter they get. When you first see them in the enclosure, they're uh, an orange. I know a lot of species seem to have white offspring when you first notice them. These guys are orange. So just some basics about these guys. These are a very large isopod. At adult full size, they are 18 millimeters long. And they're quite chunky. They have quite of a unique face, more of like a Cubaris face that's kind of blunt on the end versus rounded like an Armadillidium species. I would call them an oblong bean shaped. <laughs> they kind of are the color of a kidney bean. As far as other locales and morphs, I will briefly mention the standard coloration is gray. I am not sure on the locales. From internet research, I found that there is Spain, Greece, and Sicily. I spoke with Oren McMonagold, who isolated these, and he referred to the original stock as simply gray. What is their reproduction like? Their brood size, they do have a pretty decent brood size. They seem to have about a minimum 10 offspring at a time, and they breed pretty steadily. I'm constantly seeing uh, juveniles in the enclosure of all variations of size, from the smallest juveniles to subadults, and but not a lot of adults. I think I'd say the initial eight I got, one passed away, but the rest of the adults I see are still the original eight of the group I got. They are, they're very similar to an armadillidium species as far as their raising of the young. The young stay burrowed, um, they come out to eat, they don't particularly hang out in a certain area or stay with the female. You'll find them just about everywhere. The most unique thing about them as juveniles is the coloration, I'd say, the fact that they deepen in color as they get older. What are their substrate needs? I keep these isopods in a moist but not wet substrate that is loose. These are bur burrowers. You should have a pretty decent amount of uh, substrate because you want the substrate to be twice as deep as they are long. So these are 18 millimeters long, so you want substrate twice that <laughs> in depth. What do you provide to yours in terms of ventilation? Their ventilation, it they seem to have tolerated everything from their first enclosure had minimal ventilation to the upgrade had a lot of ventilation with cross flow and their current enclosure has actually very minimal ventilation and they've thrived in every situation. Is this a species that appreciates a moisture gradient? They do like a moisture gradient. They do need a mossy area, and the mossy area will need to be replenished often because they do eat the moss. So you'll want to keep that up to keep that end really super hydrated. And then I keep it at about 75% moist, and then the 25% where I keep a majority of the leaves, I don't put any water on, just let it stay dry. And I'll find the ice pads across the whole gradient. Ashley, in your experience, 
What seems to be the best temperature range for Armadillo officinalis? They seem to do better at about mid 70s as far as temperature goes. I feel like if I were to get them cooler, they probably would slow down reproduction and they seem to really have sped up production when it became warmer around like 75 degrees, I'd say. Do they have preferred materials or shapes with regard to hides? They do burrow, but they also will climb up into cork. They're large, so they can't really get into the holes of the cork, but they'll hang underneath. But once you pick up that piece of cork, in about half a minute, they'll drop. So you don't want to pick up a piece of cork over an open area because they're going to fall. Uh, what I do is I pick up the cork and flip it over quick so that they don't even get a chance to fall. They hang out among the leaves. You'll find them in the layers of leaves. You pick up leaves, there'll be babies under there. There'll be babies on top of them. They do burrow, but they also hang out just at the very top of the substrate. Uh, they'll stay under uh, basically anything you put over the substrate, they'll stay under, whether that be a cuddle bone, leaves, cork, other bark. I give them some sticks, things like that. They just hang out right at that base level and then down. <laughs> Have you noticed that they prefer any specific foods? They don't really even eat a lot of leaves that I've noticed, but they do hide in them. So I would suggest having a good substantial amount of leaves because they do like to hide among them. Their preferred food is actually they go crazy for fish flakes. I can give them endless amounts of fish flakes and they will finish them up. They love carrots that are sliced thin and flat. And they also like zucchini, then I also do the same thing. I slice thin and flat. And they will eat dried insects. They will eat just about anything. <laughs> they have a great feeding response too, with the caveat that they are nocturnal. So you could put a bunch of food in in the morning and they will not touch it. And you come in once the sun sets and they will swarm it. And it's very cool situation just come in at night and check on them and there's just in the morning it seemed like an empty bin and in the evening it is just full of life just all these guys come out before we continue i'd like to give a shout out to my patrons on patreon.com patreon is not only a great way to help keep this channel going in many cases it's been a great way for me to get to know you a little better that's how i came into contact with ashley she's been a great supporter of the channel for a while now and chatting on Patreon is how the idea for this video was born. If you enjoy learning from my videos and you'd like to help support what I do by becoming a patron, you can click on the link that I'll put at the end of this video or in the description. And now, back to Armadillo Officinalis Orange Crush. Are there any other special considerations for this isopod species? They are an easy isopod to care for, like I said. They do need a deeper depth substrate, and there's one huge consideration you should make when keeping these is they don't live the standard two to three years. These guys can live up to nine years. So be prepared <laughs> for the long haul with these guys. What about difficulties with this species that hobbyists should be aware of? The only difficulty with them, I would say there really isn't a difficulty other than the fact that they are nocturnal. My other favorite species is the giant canyon, which are also nocturnal, maybe I'm a little nocturnal, so that's why they're my favorites. Does this species work as a bioactive custodian, in your opinion? Would they work as a bioactive custodian? My answer is, I don't know. Um, I exclusively keep isopods as pets. These guys, I would lean towards no, due to their size and the fact that they burrow. Their size would make them very easy prey. <laughs> And considering the coloration, I would see these more as a display or a pet isopod. So tell us a little bit more about this species as a pet or display isopod. And as far as keeping them as a display or a pet, uh, as I stated before, they are nocturnal. You're not going to see them a lot. But 
they are a very friendly isopod. You can get them out, you can hold them any time of the day, you can hold them, they'll crawl around on you, they don't seem to mind it. And I think one of the advantages of these guys is I think they would be great for families with kids. They are large enough that you can hold them. They're hardy enough that they're not going to be easily squished like a powder, say. Um, supervised, <laughs> supervise the children. When you pick them up, they will stay in a ball for a little bit and then they'll open up and start walking around. So I think that's a huge plus if you're considering keeping isopods as a pet and you have children, these are probably at the top of my list that for a family pet. You've already mentioned that they're nocturnal. Anything else to add relating to their visibility? As far as um, daytime visibility, I would say some on the surface, but again, they're nocturnal. Huge feeding response at night. <laughs> they love to come out at night. But also the unique thing about them is at night, even with the lights on, they'll still stay out. Light doesn't seem to bother them. They don't run and hide. They stay out and run around. I was, I'm not giving them an option right now, but they're, they're pretty active once they've come out for the night. One of the most unique and interesting things about this isopod species is how it reacts when startled. Could you address that? They do have a unique startle response. Uh, they curl up, but then they make a squeaky noise. So they rub their legs together when they're startled and they make this noise. And if you hold them up to your ear, like I said, you can hear them making the squeaky noise. Otherwise, it's it, you can't hear it. It's not something if I held these guys up to the mic, they wouldn't do it. For one, they've calmed down, and two, it's very, very quiet. For those considering adding this species to their collection, what are the most important cons of keeping it? The only cons I would say for anybody considering this species is that they are nocturnal. And then their drop response is a con if you're not careful. You don't want to drop these guys on the ground and have them get injured or take off on you. Uh, you have to be very careful in that way. And the other con, I guess, would say you need more space with these guys than you would any other isopod. One, because of their size, they'll need to be split up more often. And then two, they live nine years. So you want to have enough space to provide for them for those nine years. So Ashley, you're quite active in the isopod community on Facebook. Can you tell us more about your isopod Facebook group? And like many people, I started getting interested in isopods in 2020, <laughs> my COVID pets. And from there, I started a group called Beginner Isopods and Isopod 911. And the group was designed just a small group of friends that wanted to learn more about isopods and also have a resource at their fingertips if something they thought emergent came up like mites or mold or pests of any kind so that is who i am um you can find me in this group it is a facebook group um called like i said beginner isopods and isopod 911 we shortened it from beginner isopod keepers <laughs> it was a mouthful and if someone wants to contact you about your isopods, how can they do that? As far as getting a hold of me, I do not sell isopods. Um, I am permitted to ship them. And on occasion, I will do trades with friends. So if you have interest in something like that at any time, you can reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram is just my hobby page, which is Ashley's Isopod Pets all together. Um, that's me. I just share pictures of my little guys. You can message me on there. You can find me on Facebook. My Facebook actually is under Ashley Neebs, which is N-E-B-S versus my full last name. And I think that's just about everything. So again, um, thank you Russ for having me. Just an isopod enthusiast sharing her um, orange guys. And really quick before I pan away, I just want to show this is their actual enclosure. I just have them out to show their color. So this is how I keep them. Some of their cork is gone. 
that I will fill this with fish food and they'll go crazy with it. It's just a sea urchin for extra calcium. And then also, just because I mentioned them, here are some of the standard gray. And for some reason, my grays didn't reproduce. So I hope that was helpful. I hope the video quality didn't detour you from learning. And I hope you consider the species as part of your collection sometime. Thank you, Ashley, for sharing your knowledge and experience with Armadillo Officinalis Orange Crush. I really appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. This video is part of a growing playlist of species-specific isopod profiles, which you can check out right here. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays, all on aquarium and vivarium pets with lots of isopod content. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell and choose all notifications so you don't miss my next video.